So the Soundbox Go is Soundbox's new speaker that's super portable and super durable, all while still being able to get super loud and have a super long battery life. If you're looking for a speaker to constantly take on the go with you, then the Go is a good option. However, I do feel that the Soundbox Go is going to get cross-referenced with a lot of other speakers out there, and there are more portable speakers out there. So today we're going to compare the Soundbox Go to the JBL Boombox 2, the Sony XG500, and the UE Hyperboom. Now when it comes to pricing, the Hyperboom has a retail price of $450. Due to inflation, it has gotten a $50 price increase. Then there are the XG500 and Boombox 2, which both have a retail price of $500. The XG500 has also gotten a $50 price increase since I initially reviewed them. But then there's the Soundbox Go, which has a retail price of $700. And if you want the optional shoulder strap, that's going to be an additional 50 bucks. Now, depending on your needs, you will be better off with one over the other. Nonetheless, if you want to pick any of these speakers up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch shelf down below. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And if you've been watching me for a while, you know I can be very particular. So I'll only set my name on something that I'm really proud of. Now first let's talk about the design of these speakers. Now all of these speakers are meant to be super portable so that you can easily take them on the go with you. However, the Go is the most cumbersome and heaviest speaker here weighing in at 20 pounds, whereas all of these other speakers weigh in at 13 pounds. Now don't get me wrong, the Go is very easy to carry around, especially considering the performance that you get out of it. But these other speakers are noticeably easier to carry around. But one pet peeve that I do have about both the Boombox 2 and XG500 is their cylindrical design. If you're going to throw either of these two speakers into the trunk of your car, you always gotta remember to either tie these speakers down or brace them against something, or else these speakers are just going to roll all around your trunk. Whereas with both the Go and Hyperboom, since they both have a rectangular design to them, they don't shift around as much. Now, regarding durability, all of these speakers are water resistant, so getting splashed on or getting caught in the rain shouldn't be a problem for any of these speakers. And both the Soundbox and XG500 are officially dust resistant as well. Now, all of these speakers should have no problem standing up to constant abuse thanks to their mostly fabric wrap bodies. However, the Soundbox Go is just more durable than these other speakers thanks to its super dense plastic body and honeycomb grill. And it's also got these extruded rubber bumpers that do a good job of absorbing any shock that hits this speaker. Now, even though the Soundbox Go is super durable, and admittedly, this is a main selling point of this speaker, I would still be mindful about not getting any dirt or water into the exhaust ports on the speaker, which are found around the main woofer. And with both the Boombox 2 and XG500, you want to be careful about not pressing in their exposed passive radiators. But besides the extra durability found on the Soundbox Go, the Go also has extra goodies like a built-in loop strap so you can always attach some things to the speaker if you have to and it also has a built-in speaker stand mount on the bottom which is nice but then there's the sony xg500 which is the only speaker here that has a built-in light feature now personally i don't think this light feature is really worth using it's not super bright so you're barely going to see it during the day but also, it's pretty hard to see in general because it's tucked away in the passive radiator of this speaker. So personally, I never use the light feature on the speaker and instead, I just enjoy the slightly longer battery life. Now, when it comes to battery life, the XG500 has an advertised battery life of 30 hours, but that's with the speaker playing at 50% volume and with this mega bass feature turned on, but with this light feature turned off. And under similar circumstances, both the Boombox 2 and Hyperboom have an advertised battery life of 24 hours. However, real world use with the XG500 playing at 80% volume with the light feature turned off, but with this mega bass feature turned on, it's good for a very healthy 10 hours of playback time and under similar circumstances the hyper boom is good for about eight and a half hours of playback time and the boombox 2 is good for about seven hours of playback time overall all of these speakers are going to have no problem keeping up with you but the sony does have the best stamina here in this little lineup 
But then there's the Soundbox Go, which is just on a whole other level. The Soundbox Go has an advertised battery life of 40 hours, and that's with the speaker playing at 50% volume and while in its power EQ. And for context, having the Go playing at 50% volume is like having all of these other speakers playing at 80% volume. So 50% volume on the Go is already a really good listening volume. And at max volume, which quite frankly, none of these other speakers can get close to, the Soundbox Go is good for up to 10 hours of playback time, which is still a lot. But if you were to use the speaker while in its base plus EQ, which is my preferred EQ because you are going to get the most out of the speaker, it's going to get a little louder and you're going to have a little bit more bass. However, you're going to have to sacrifice some battery life because at max volume, it's only good for up to six hours of playback time, which is still a lot. But if you want to extend the battery life on the go, you can use it while in its indoors EQ. But while in its indoors EQ, the speaker just isn't going to have as much bass and it's also not going to get as loud. But at max volume, it's going to be good for up to 14 hours of playback time, which is a lot. Overall, battery life on the Soundbox Go is just on a whole other level when compared to these other speakers. But also with the Go, you can easily and quickly swap out the 99.84 watt hour battery. And this is good for two main reasons. First off, this is going to extend the life of your investment because if your battery were to die on you, like mine did on my Soundbox 3 after three years, I can just get a new battery. But also if you're going to be off grid and you have multiple batteries, then you can always just quickly swap out the batteries and just keep the party going. Now, even though I really like the swappable battery on the Go, there are some things to keep in mind. Now, you can use the Go while it's plugged in and charging your battery. However, Soundbox is very adamant that you don't use the speaker past 50% volume. And also, Soundbox is very adamant that you don't use the speaker without a battery. I tried doing this and my Go literally started screeching. But now, let's talk about the port setup on these speakers. Now, unfortunately, the Go has the weakest port setup here. The Go only has an audio jack, and that's it. And unfortunately, this is very disappointing because there is a lot of horsepower here that's just going unused. But then there are all of these other speakers. Now, obviously, all of these speakers have an audio jack and they all have a USB-A output so that you can charge your own devices if you absolutely must. And the Hyperboom also has an optical port. So if you want, you can use it as a soundbar with your TV. But then there's the XG500, which kicks its port game up here up a notch. Now, yes, the XG500 has two USB-A ports, but the really cool thing is that one of these USB-A ports, you can plug in a USB stick and play music off of it if you really want to. But more importantly, the XG500 has a quarter inch input, so you can plug in a microphone if you want. And personally, I really feel that the Go should have at least one quarter inch input. Now, when it comes to Bluetooth connectivity, the Go is using Bluetooth 5.0. But more importantly, it can only be connected to one device at a time and is still only using SBC. Whereas with all of these other speakers, they can be connected to two devices at the same time. So you and a friend can both be DJ. Now, both the Boombox 2 and Hyperboom are still only using SBC. Whereas with the XG500, it has support for SBC, AAC, and Sony's own LDAC. Now, before we move on to the sound test, I do want to point out one pet peeve that I do have about the Go, and that has to do with this dial. Now, you can control the local volume of this speaker, but you can't control your media playback directly from the speaker itself. You gotta do all of that either from your phone or whatever other media source you're using. Whereas with all of these other speakers, you can control your media playback directly from their control panels up top. But now let's talk about sound because these speakers are very different from one another. Now the Soundbox Go has a single frontward firing woofer and a single frontward firing tweeter. But the very important thing to keep in mind here is that you can't amplify its bass by simply placing it up against the wall because it has frontward firing exhaust ports. But then there's the Boombox 2 and XG500, which both have dual frontward firing woofers, dual frontward firing tweeters, and dual passive radiators that shoot out the sides. So with both of these speakers, you can amplify their bass if you place them in a corner. 
And finally, there's the Hyperboom, which also has dual frontward firing woofers and dual frontward firing tweeters, but its passive radiators shoot out the back. So it's a little easier to amplify the bass on the speaker because you can place it up against any wall instead of having to look for a corner. But now we're going to jump into the sound test. The Soundbox Go is playing while at 75% volume, whereas all of these other speakers are playing at max volume. Oh, I got lost on the way to you in an orange sky by the ocean blue. Every mile lost, my soul renewed, taken by the sunrise in the golden. So first, let's adjust max volume. Like you may have just seen, the GO was coasting here at 75% volume, whereas all of these other speakers were playing at max volume. Simply put, none of these speakers can keep up with the GO at max volume. And if you're looking for a speaker to mostly use while outdoors, then the GO's max volume performance can come in handy. And when it comes to max volume performance, the Hyperboom is the next loudest speaker here, followed by the Boombox 2, and then there's the XG500, which is the quietest speaker here in this lineup. 
However, with both the XG500 and Boombox 2, if you were to use them while they're plugged in, you will get a performance bump out of them. They'll get a little louder and they'll have more bass. But with the Hyperboom, you don't get any performance bump out of it while it's plugged in. And like I mentioned earlier, you shouldn't use the Go past 50% volume if you have it plugged in, but I did it for science reasons and you also don't get a performance bump out of it. Now, the fact that the Soundbox Go gets super loud is great for outdoor use, but I would only recommend that you get the Soundbox Go if you plan on using it like 90% of the time while outdoors. The Go leans towards a brighter sound signature. Its tweeter handles the highs and a good amount of the mids as well. So if you were to use the speaker at lower volumes, it's going to sound relatively bright and flat. Now you can go in and make your own EQ, and I went in and I raised the bass on the speaker and I lowered the highs so that the speaker would have some physicality in its bass at the lower volumes that you would want to use the speaker while indoors. But even still, its bass can be a little lacking and it can sound a little narrow. Whereas with all of these other speakers, they get decently loud while outdoors as well. But more importantly, they have a good amount of physicality in their bass while at lower volumes. But personally, I do feel the Hyperboom is the best sounding speaker here. It has strong and pronounced vocals similar to the Boombox 2, but it has more physicality in its bass. And unlike the Boombox 2, whose bass stops increasing once you raise the volume past 80%, after that the Boombox 2 does start to sound a little bright, the bass on the Hyperboom continues to increase even past 80% volume. Plus, thanks to the Hyperboom's layout, it's just easier to amplify its bass. Now, with the Hyperboom, you can also go in and make your own EQ. But personally, I think the Hyperboom sounds perfect with its stock EQ. And while we're talking about customizable EQs, you can also adjust the EQ on the XG500 to your liking. But then there's the Boombox 2 where you just can't. JBL is saving their customizable EQ for their upcoming Boombox 3. But with all that being said, I highly recommend the Hyperboom because it can perform very well both at lower and higher volumes. Whereas with the Soundbox Go, this is a speaker that you're better off using while outdoors and at higher volumes because the Go just needs that extra room so that it can stretch its legs and get its space going. But finally, let's talk about pairing these speakers up to other speakers. Now, Sony has the most accommodating speaker pairing protocol here. Now, you can pair your XG500 up to some of Sony's larger box speakers, like either an XP500 or an XP700, or you can also pair your XG500 to some of Sony's more portable speakers, like either an XB43, XB33, or an XB23, and you can pair up to 100 speakers together, which is obviously unnecessary. Now, even though Sony's speaker pairing protocol is super accommodating, it's not my favorite. It's not super easy to use. Sometimes all of your speakers don't get paired up and sometimes you will hear skipping in your music. But it works when it does. And then there's JBL's Party Boost. Now, JBL's speaker pairing protocol is super easy to use. All of your speakers always get paired up. Skipping is not an issue and you can have a lot of range in between your speakers. However, with JBL's JBL's Party Boost, you cannot pair any of their smaller speakers to any of JBL's larger party box speakers like you can with Sony's speaker pairing protocol. Then there's UE speaker pairing protocol, which is also very easy to use and skipping is not an issue. But UE's ecosystem isn't as large as either JBL's or Sony's. So if you do plan on getting a Hyperboom, you're not going to have as many speakers to choose from. And finally, there are Soundbox's speaker pairing protocol, which is pretty good as well. Now, just like with JBL and UE, it's very easy to use. You can do everything from the app. All of your speakers always get paired up and skipping is not an issue. Now, you can pair a Soundbox Go either up to another Soundbox Go or to a Soundbox 3, and you can have up to five speakers paired together, which I feel is plenty. But the cool thing about Soundbox's speaker pairing protocol is that you can use whatever EQ you want and 
then you can also assign whatever channel you want to whatever speaker. You don't need to have two of the same speakers to get left and right stereo sound going like you do with all of these other brands. But with all that being said, the Soundbox Go is Soundbox's ultra portable and ultra durable Bluetooth speaker that still gets super loud and has a super long battery life all while in a relatively small package. And if that's what you're looking for, then the Soundbox Go will not disappoint. However, I do have to stress that the Soundbox Go is only worth getting if you plan on mostly using it while outdoors and at higher volumes. Since the tweeter on the Go is putting in overtime here, the Go is a very hard speaker to use while indoors and at lower volumes. And you also gotta keep in mind the port setup on this speaker. Unfortunately, it is disappointing. You can't plug in a microphone or an instrument. But if you're looking for something a little more tamed, all of these are good options to consider. But they each have their own specific attributes. If you're looking for the best sound, then the Hyperboom is the way to go. If you're looking for the best battery life, then the XG500 is the way to go. Plus, you can plug in a microphone and even play music off of a USB stick if you must. And finally, there's the Boombox 2, which I feel sounds better than the XG500. But its main attribute is Party Boost and JBL speaker ecosystem. However, if you do decide to pick up the Boombox 2, just keep in mind that the Boombox 3 is expected in summer of 2022. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit the like button and get subscribed. If you want to pick any of the products up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And you know I can be very particular, so I'll only slap my name on something if I'm really proud of it.